the mainstream media. It's been vilified by no less than the president of the United States. So what's wrong with it? And who's filling the void? The Investigators starts now. Breitbart has become the go-to news source for people who believe the news media is getting it wrong. We admit that we have a worldview, which is populist, nationalist, grassroots, conservative. Its former it's head, Steve Bannon, left better. the website to work for Trump. And though he's now back at Breitbart, he is not bipartisan. We're not here to defy President Trump. We were here to praise and honor him. Breitbart is just one of many conservative-leaning outlets that have gained prominence in a polarized political climate. Neil W. McCabe is a former Breitbart political reporter who's recently left the company to join Big League Politics, launched by another former Breitbarter. The website says it's dedicated to investigative journalism, that it's neither conservative nor liberal. So mainstream? Definitely not, according to McCabe. So let me start with, you know, your, your time at Breitbart. Now you're with big league politics. And if these are meant to be an antidote to the mainstream media, and we hear that phrase, what does mainstream media mean and what's wrong with it? Well, I, I think there's one way of thinking of it is uh, sort of the big media outlets like the CNNs and the New York Times, the Washington Post. These are sort of like they put out that narrative that carries the day. And that narrative is usually the establishment narrative and it doesn't always reflect what's going on. But isn't the establishment now Trump? I mean, he's in the White House. I, I would suggest to you very strongly that uh, Trump is not the establishment or the establishment media. I mean, a very good friend of mine, Neil Monroe, interrupted President Obama once. I, mean, I believe he's the only reporter who ever interrupted Obama during a press conference. He lost his press credentials. In this administration, you know, the reporters just yell and scream and interrupt the president every time. It's really unreal. But isn't that something that, it, that he invites in his demeanor? He doesn't seem really put off by it. He seems to enjoy that sort of to and fro. But certainly you gather that there's a hostility with the report, virtually every reporter in that room compared to what happened with President Obama. There was a, there was a fawning of President Obama. There was a celebration of President Obama. There's no celebration of Donald Trump among the reporters in, at the White House. But Big League Politics says on its website, we're neither um, Democrats nor Republicans. We're investigative journalists. We want to get at the truth and expose that for people. So how do you do that and, and get at what you believe the truth is, but also feel that you're kind of the antidote to what you think is, is not being shared properly? I, I think if I can talk about it this way professionally, the truth is that reporters keep more secrets than they ever tell. The reporters are actually the ones who hold secrets back from the people because they want to protect the relationship or because they don't think the readers or the audience can handle it. And I think what we're trying to do is we're saying, we don't have those relationships, and so we're looking to tell the truth as it is. But in time, don't you have those relationships? I mean, if, if journalists have sources or people that they want to be able to reach out to, isn't that part of of journalism is that you do make connections with people. Oh, I mean, and that's that's the dance. And so as we do that dance, we're gonna to try to be on the side of letting people know what's really going on. And we're not part of the establishment. And so, you know, <laughs> we're not we're not in we're not part of the cheering section uh, of the establishment that you see it's sort of like a like a politico or a CNN. Uh, CBS, NBC, ABC, PBS, I mean, National Public Radio, I mean, uh, the Associated Press, USA Today. You know, it's, it's unreal that every day you can look at these papers and they're attacking Trump and the Republican Party and the conservatives, whereas, you know, a year ago, they were doing the complete opposite. There seems to be a, a polarization of the news media in the U.S. where people seem to be pretty clearly within their jobs, leaning left or right. And I, I would say that that's not, not exactly the way it is in Canada. There's, there's less of that. Why does that exist here? Is that holding up a mirror to the way people feel and the politics of the place and the fact that it's a pretty split country right now? Or is that approach of the media exacerbating the differences? You know, people tell me, they say, why can't we go back to the like 1970s when everybody in Washington got along? Well, the 1970s, you know, the Democrats railroaded out of the White House a president who won 49 states. So I would say we're, there's always going to be that polarization and that divisiveness. It's because the White House is winner take all, whereas in a parliamentary system, 
you can sort of fiddle in the middle. So if if there is this greater polarization here, how do people know they're getting the truth? Do they read both sides? Do they have to consume a lot to <laughs> so know that they're getting it's the truth? It's the marketplace of ideas. Yeah. And it's like you just have to throw it up. And I think I think people should be concerned if someone in the government is going after Facebook over fake news. The problem with fake news is you don't want some bureaucrat deciding what fake news is. You want a competing media outlet to go after it. Sort of like, you know, Chevrolet and Ford sort of watch each other so nobody can get away with too much. That's that's sort of the antidote to so-called fake news. The one question I was curious about, we hear Trump say, you know, CNN is fake news or the main nets are fake news, but he will champion Fox and Friends or Hannity. What do you want him to say about big league politics? Would you be happy if he liked it? Or most journalists are appalled when the president, the prime minister is happy with their work because they feel like they're not really holding them to account. I, uh, I used to work for Human Events, which was a 70 year old uh, political newspaper that passed away recently. Uh, the President Reagan brought the guys who ran Human Events into the Oval Office to scream at him. And he waved the paper at him and he said, boys, I want you to know, that ever since I've been president, I've been reading your paper more and more and enjoying it less and less. And that's what I want from President Trump. So you're not looking for him to say, you guys are great. I don't want to be the ambassador of France. I mean, I don't, what would I need from him? You know, it's like I'm a reporter. You know, I would, I would like to be considered solid political intelligence so that somebody can read one of my articles and they can basically BS their way through a meeting or a conversation. What is the thing that you think Canadians most need to know about the media in the U.S. right now? I mean, it's a free-for-all. And uh, it's that clash of ideas, but it's also, you know, there's competing elites, there's regionalism. I mean, this is a big country of 300 million people, and it's all sort of smashing together all the time. But what you do have is you do have an establishment in this country that controls the apparatus, that controls the institutions, that sort of, it's inside the civil service and the bureaucracy, it's inside the universities and, you know, and the corporate boardrooms. And they're, they're sort of wanting to hold on to the power that they have. Neil, thank you very much. I really enjoyed talking to you.